during my time in Japan, reaction to the line, it's time for your Kenko Shindan from the people around me has run the gamut from mild panic, like, oh no, I wish I'd quit smoking a while ago, through to like a tired sigh of, oh, have I got to do this damn thing again? And even in some cases, a kind of bizarre sense of excitement about it all. Since I'm about to head off to take my annual once over, in this video, we're going to take a look at the medical checkup experience in Japan. Stick around to the end, where we'll take a look and see what kind of shape I'm in. Before we get into all that though, guys, thanks as always for your continued support of the City Cost Japan YouTube channel. It means a great deal to us. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you do like this video, click on that thumbs up button to give it a like, share it, share the wealth, and let's get into this. <laughs> Kenko Shindan, or health check, are an annual staple of the Life in Japan calendar for many, especially among many company workers who will be given their marching orders to the nearest clinic each year to be poked and prodded so that they might be proved fit for labour. Even if you're not in gainful employment in Japan, you really should be on the country's national health insurance scheme known as Kokumin Kenko Hoken. In which case, depending on where you live, you might receive a letter, something like this, each year from your local municipality inviting you to come for a Kenko Shindan or medical check. Let's see how invasive my particular check is going to be this time around. We can see the contents of the medical check details on this particular section of the letter here. What we've got is a checkup of our medical history. They're going to do a check for our weight, our height, and the sort of girth of our abdomen, I think. We're also going to have a blood pressure test. We check our urine for like proteins and sugars. And there's also going to be a blood test, the contents of which I cannot understand, but they're detailed down there. This letter comes with a list of the clinics around here at which this check or this Kenko Shindan is available. We called one of them directly to make an appointment, quoting that we'd received this letter from the local municipality. At the time of filming this then, I'm off to the clinic in a couple of days. Being over 40 as I am, I also qualify for some of the cancer checks that are offered by the municipality, and I'm gonna do those at the same time as my Kenko Shinda. This time around, I'm getting a chest x-ray to see how the lungs are faring. Not something you look forward to if you've had a history of smoking. They're also gonna have a sift through my, well, number twos to see what's going on there. In preparation then, I've had to take a couple of stool samples. Rather delightfully, they're in the fridge now, waiting to be deployed at the clinic. So this is an example of the test kit that they've given us to collect our stool sample. Let's take a look inside. Got a set of instructions. Got the kit itself, test tube type thing. So basically, um, not that I'm much of an expert on this kind of thing, but according to the instructions, what we need to do, instruction one is, the key point here it seems is that we've got to sit this way around on the toilet. So we're not taking the classic forward facing position, we're going reverse position, reverse position this time around. And rather delightfully, we need to take this kind of spatula type thing and uh, do a kind of crisscross situation. <laughs> on our stool so that we collect a nice healthy sample, something like that. Then we stick it back into the tube. And then delightfully, what we need to do is put this in the refrigerator until it's time to take it along with us to our medical check. Lovely stuff. Now, as reluctant as someone like me might be to take a Kenko Shindan, the process is positively Spartan compared to the rather dystopian sounding Ningen Dock or Human Dock experience. Ningen Dock really is a spectacularly awful, not to say anything about it being alarming, name for what might be more prosaically referred to as a comprehensive medical checkup or other terms to that effect. Believe it or not though, July 12th is now not very well known in Japan as Ningen Dock Day. 
a bid to promote health through early detection of potentially serious medical conditions through the medical examination. Around this time last year was my first time to subject myself to Japan's Ningen Dock experience. And the reality revealed itself to be somewhere between a kind of dystopian nightmare and actually, well, just rather normal. Myself and fellow dockers did shuffle in dystopian silence, wearing matching pastel gowns around a medical facility in between being plugged into various bits of kit to be jabbed, prodded and scanned. The retro slippers though, a faded and peeling facility and the really friendly nurses were anything but dystopian or indeed futuristic. Preparation for the Ningen dock included taking two stool samples, a urine sample and a rather involved medical questionnaire. On the day of the examination, we all changed into our robes and uh, some attentive nurses guided me to and from each of the medical checks. I was never left alone and at no point did I feel particularly confused about where I was supposed to be or what I was supposed to be doing. Each test was conducted in private, away from prying eyes, which is not always the medical experience in Japan, which often lacks the levels of privacy which you might have come to expect back home. The examination ended with a consultation with the resident doctor, what results they were able to confirm with me on the day they went over with me briefly. I was then handed some laxative pills, more on that later, a bottle of water and a 1000 yen coupon to use a variety of stores around Japan. The end, after what was around, what, two hours? So what was included in my particular Ningen Dock experience? Let's take a look. The content of the Ningen Dock taken on this occasion is listed here. I'll largely refrain from going into the purpose of the tests in any great detail, as I'm in no way qualified to do so. Of the tests undertaken, the barium swallow experience, that's the Ibu Exen, perhaps bears closer inspection, first of all because it involves exposure to radiation and drinking down the chemical element barium. That aside, the experience itself was, in retrospect, pretty hilarious actually. It involved getting tipped about on a gurney whilst the nurse in another room barked out instructions with military zeal through a speaker system. Things like turn over twice, hold on tight, no burping, take two tissues, not one, not many, just two, stuff like that. Getting the barium out of the other end, so to speak, proved to be, well, less hilarious, even with the help of those laxative pills handed out at the end of the examination. So the results of my Ningen doc came through, I don't know, two weeks, two weeks after I took the test, I think, and they kind of look like this, two big sheets. Basically, you're graded from like, <laughs> like a school examination from A, which is good, I think, through B, C, D, and D1, D2, something like that. Now, looking through my results, uh, in most cases, I got A's and B's, which I was pretty chuffed about. I did, however, get one C, which was for some kind of like slightly high cholesterol. Now, there are indeed, you do get some uh, explanations in Japanese, of course, about what all of these checks mean. So despite having got A's and B's and only one C, I was graded overall as a C, which kind of bummed me out a little bit, but at least getting a C means you don't have to go back in for further checks. And uh, well, here I am a year later and I'm still alive. So maybe that's good news for some people anyway. Um, and I did, the, the doctor writes like a kind of a sort of message on your, your sheet here about recommendations and steps that you, you know, you need to take to improve your health. And it says something along the lines of your, your cholesterol is quite high. I should be eating more vegetables and doing more exercise. And uh, that's about it. Now, in my case, I only paid around 1,000 yen for my Ningen dot last year because it came as part of my partner's Shakai Hoken or, you know, kind of company slash state medical insurance scheme. Otherwise, I think you can expect to pay what? around 50,000 yen for a kind of standard dock experience in Japan. Facilities often offer a choice of Ningen dock programs from, you know, two to three hour to like half day programs through to even like two, three day overnight stays where looking at the brochure, it looks like you might be staying in some kind of spa experience. Of course, the different experiences are reflected in the prices. Now, going back to those company-issued Kenko Shindan, or medical checkups, 
for me, there still exists a kind of gray area as to whether or not these checks are actually mandatory. I mean, mandatory on the part of the employee or the worker as to whether or not they've got to undertake them. Do they have a choice in the matter? I know that provision of a Kenko Shindan is a mandated responsibility of employers in Japan, according to Japan's Industrial Health and Safety Act. I'm just not sure if the employee is duty bound to subject themselves to it. For me, it sounds like a fabulous invasion of your personal freedom and your privacy. But staying with the Industrial Health and Safety Act, we read that the employer who regularly employs 50 or more workers must submit without delay a report of the results of a periodical medical examination to the chief of the competent labour standards inspection office when the employer has conducted a medical examination set forth in articles blah 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 blah. Again, still not particularly clear as to whether or not the check is actually mandatory, but it sounds like if the employee does decide to undertake it, it sounds like keeping the results private is not really an option. In my own experience, taking a Kenko Shindan with an Eikaiwa employer one year, some days after the check, I came into work to find a letter on my desk from some mysterious department that I'd never heard of telling me that based on the results of my checkup, I needed to go to a medical facility for further tests on my own money. No face-to-face -face consultation with a doctor then, mindful of the sacrosanct doctor-patient confidentiality agreement, but a letter from some faceless internal department. I did protest the lack of privacy, but this was the Eikaiwa racket, so as you can imagine, it fell on deaf ears. I guess though, if you do end up working in Japan and your employer lays on a Kenko Shindan for you, while you might not like the idea of being given a medical, it does perhaps indicate that your employer is at least trying to do things by the book. Anyway, I'm about to get myself prepped for my upcoming Kenko Shindan. Apparently I'm not allowed to eat or drink anything apart from water, within 10 hours prior to taking this check. Let's see how we get on. Anyway, in the meantime guys, thanks very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, don't forget to click on that thumbs up button to give it a like. Subscribe to the Seed Across Japan YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Click on the bell for notifications so you don't miss when our next video drops. And we'll see you next time. Happy health guys. Bye bye.